to the psalm reading for Ash Wednesday, a reading from Psalm 51. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out our transgressions. Wash us.
and making you a new creation. Thanks be to God. God. You may be sweet. Never know what pain he experienced, but we can try to 
Via Della Rosa in a sense. We'll start with some of the Stations of the Cross. We'll talk about six different stations, all to help us go through our suffering and realize our forgiveness. The parts that the six stations I picked are to go, are ones that can make us maybe step into Jesus' shoes a little bit, or maybe even into the bystanders. The first station I picked is actually the second station, if you look at them, and it's when Jesus receives his crown of thorns and his cross. This painting was given to me as a gift from my parents by a local artist from my hometown, and I asked him to share some words about what inspired him to do this, this artwork that is titled For Our Sins. His name is Eric. He says this, Jesus died for our sins because he loves us. Hopefully everyone at some point in their life has felt his love. My story is this, my teenage years were pretty much a roller coaster. I had good times and some bad. I also had a lot of questions, including ones regarding the church. But I didn't feel I had someone that would talk to me about these things. I did what I could to get through high school and started college in the fall of 94, was the fresh start that I needed. However, I was unfortunately in a car accident that day, the day after my 19th birthday. I suffered head and back injuries and was in the hospital for five days. I remember asking God in the hospital, why was life so rough for me? So much mental and now physical pain. However, when I came home from the hospital, I had a 180 degree turnaround. I thanked God that I was alive. Thinking about the accident, I knew it could have turned out differently. I could have been ejected from the vehicle, I could have been paralyzed. I could have also died, but I didn't. I know I was given a second chance, not everyone gets that. That was a life-changing experience. I truly felt God's love for me. I can't explain how happy I was, despite the physical pain. Now, 20-some years later, I can tell you life still has its rough moments. But I believe God may perhaps use those to remind us that we need Him. We should not only look to Him when times are tough, but we should include Him in every moment of our lives. God is good. He loves us so much that his son died for our sins so that we could live. But the best part of all, he also lives. He lives in each one of us. Share that love so that others may know the good that he does. End quote from Eric. Eric shares this pain that he experienced and maybe even some of the shame that he experienced as he was growing up and around and among that pain after the accident which is not an unusual experience to many of us. We all have our hardships and our lives that we have to bear, whether there's something as simple as having a disagreement with somebody in our family, or having an ill, or being so severe as having an injury or an illness that completely changes our lives. In the Isaiah reading, it reminds us of the sufferings that we endure at the hands of our enemies. We all have those people that we struggle to love, that we struggle to remember the Jesus creed with, especially if they've been at the root of some of our hardships. Although Isaiah shows the suffering at the hands of the enemies, Isaiah also shows us how when we do not hide our faces, our enemies are not disappearing, but the amount of fear that they can strike into us and others begins to shrink. As we interact with people on a daily basis, there's a very high chance that we'll experience some shame or guilt each and every day. Some people will experience shame a lot stronger than others. We experience shame when people are able to show some dominance over us or when we allow someone to attack who we truly are. And Isaiah, the reference is to giving your back to someone or letting someone pull your beard. When someone is striking your back, the face of the attacker as well as the victim is able to be seen by it all, <clears throat> leaving the victim to feel shame in all the pain that they, can, that they are not only experiencing, but as well as what everybody else can see them experiencing. This is where we can also think about Jesus on his journey with his cross. When, J 
Jesus carried his cross, he was beaten, he was spit upon, and they even attempted to take away his dignity. As Jesus carried the 125 pound cross through Jerusalem, he was continuously shamed in front of everyone that gathered to watch the walk. We can find images of Jesus falling and sweating and bleeding and struggling to continue carrying his cross as the guards surround him constantly, telling him to keep moving. When we experience shame, we often turn to silence. We become very silent in everything we do. And Isaiah, though, the prophet stands in a room that there is neither honor nor shame for anyone. He doesn't conform to the social norms, so he doesn't take on the highest status in the community, which can sometimes be a teacher. But instead, he takes on the status of a student, a student that is ready to learn and is always learning, a student that ears are wide open, listening to farther ways to learn. God has given his prophet a tongue of the student and open ears to listen with, so that they do not need to possess any honor or shame. Students are always learning about heaven and earth, life with one another, and lives with God as they continue to unfold. So as we continue to be faced with our hardships in our daily lives, we need to remember that we are all given tongues and open ears like students. We are constantly learning and growing in our lives with one another and with God. When we can remember to keep shame and honor out of our lives by remembering that everyone is a student, always learning, we can begin to show our faces to our enemies and shrink the fear that they can strike upon us. So let's be students together on this Lenten journey, learning about Jesus' suffering and God's abundant love for each and every one of us.
God our provider. You have nine.